Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day to start things off. Crypto exchange known as Coinbase Pro is adding privacy or privacy coin Zcash to its listings. The platform announced on Thursday that customers can transfer Zcash into its professional trading platform. Though as with previous editions, users can not yet purchase a token until the exchange has established enough liquidity. Deposits will be accepted for at least 12 hours after the announcement at 18 o'clock. When trading is enabled, only Coinbase Pro users in most of the United States, the UK, the European Union, Canada, Singapore, and Australia will be able to access the coin. New York residents, as usual, and other jurisdictions may receive access at a later date. The exchange did not announce when Coinbase.com or mobile app users would be able to begin trading the cryptocurrency. Due to the nature of the privacy, privacy coin, full support is not yet being added. As the post explains, Zcash offers both transparent and shielded transaction types, which show different amounts of the information about the transaction. In particular, shielded trans um, addresses are anonymized, while transparent transactions are traceable, such as with Bitcoin. The post goes on to say, and I do quote, Initially, we will support deposits for both transparent and shielded transactions, which I'm surprised about, but only support withdrawals to transparent addresses. There we go. In the future, we'll explore support for withdrawals to shielded addresses and locations where it complies with local laws. End quote. Uh... <sighs> I mean, I, I, I should have been more shocked, but uh, a, a part of me actually isn't. Uh, here I was thinking the entire time that they were going to add either Cardano or Stellar before adding Zcash, but Zcash has already been added to the... Uh, hold on. Had to lower my uh, headphone volume. I was like screaming into my ear. They, uh, uh, Zcash has already been added to the Gemini exchange. So it kind of makes sense that they would, if it's compliant with the Gemini people, is therefore compliant everywhere else. Uh, Zcash is not the most popular coin in the entire world. The price has gone up. I think it went up by around 11% last night. Uh, it is currently around like 2-3% up, somewhere around that level. Uh, the market's also in red, so that could also have a, a huge effect on it. Um... Yeah, not really that much to say about this. There wasn't as much excitement. It's, it's nice that Coinbase is, is finally adding new coins. Uh, but the elephant in the room is still there. Uh, Coinbase won't be able to get away from the elephant that's sitting and staring directly at them until they finally announce that they're going to support it. What we're seeing now is finally what's something that I thought a, a while ago that was going to end up happening is that uh, they were going to start adding coins uh, in certain parts of the world or even, <laughs> even if it would... <laughs> Just want to single out New York State, but in particular, many other countries in the world are uh, going to receive support for coins, while certain places, uh, usually the U.S. or many other countries, whatever, what have you, are not going to receive support for this coin. And this is slowly starting to happen, uh, but this is now there, I think, what is it, third or fourth coin that they've added this year. So, very good job for Coinbase. Uh, they still have a lot more work to do, uh, but without going into too much detail on it, let's move on. Next up, Fidelity Investments is looking to expand its institutional crypto asset platform to include trading services for the top five to seven cryptocurrencies by market cap. Revealed yesterday at the Block FS conference in New York, the news came in response to a question from Coindesk posed to Tom Jessup, who is the hell of a, hell of a, head of Fidelity Digital Assets on what other cryptocurrencies may be added to the platform to be launched next year. Last month, the buy side giant announced it will be launching a separate company known as Fidelity Digital Asset Services, at the time stating that it would be offering custody and trading services for Bitcoin and Ethereum, the cryptocurrency that powers Ethereum, blah, 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 so-and-so. He said, I think there is demand for the next four or five in rank of market cap order. So we will be looking at that. Jessop explained that Fidelity is taking a customer-driven approach for now and that its 13,000-plus institutional clients are interested in Bitcoin and Ether because they make up a large part of the current market cap. He said, I think when it comes to security tokens or tokens that are likely to be deemed securities, we are waiting for that space to develop, end quote. He also said, we have had some interest, but we don't think it's a groundswell of interest. So our focus is really on the top, call it five to seven, before we start building capabilities for the tail. But I think it will come in, quote. 
Uh, not really that important about the rest of the, the news. Uh, so uh, it's nice to hear that at least, in, first of all, part of the problem that I, I think we're going to end up having with the cryptocurrency space is, is this a very narrow view of exactly what people are going to want or are going to be interested in. Um, part of the issue that I have right now is that we have over 2,000 coins. But many uh, different places, you know, you can say what you want about being a big uh, a Bitcoin maximalist or, you know, whatever the case might be. Uh, I don't I, I think it's completely wrong to simply just focus on Bitcoin when you focus completely on Bitcoin for and even Ethereum on the side. Ethereum only only is mentioned as well because of where it used to be in coin market caps prices around the world. Uh, when you solely focus on Bitcoin, this is one of the reasons why Bitcoin will then end up making it. Uh, the entire point of cryptocurrencies to me is to find a new payment system or a new payment method or something that'll uh, bring the world into this new age of finance. Uh, but when you only give one apple on the tree a chance, this is kind of where you have the problem. I'm also going to uh, just a little uh, side note for those who haven't even realized at this point. Uh, as if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty certain Fidelity is... Uh, located in the states and they were talking about a uh, security tokens or tokens that are likely to be deemed securities i don't think the sec is ever going to give actual statements on specific coins i think that would be a uh a lot of work for them simply because when you deem uh 15 coin securities and 10 other ones not securities and then other companies are going to start going down the list as well I have the 800th coin. Why have you not declared that my coin is so-and-so-and-so? No, we were not launched as an ICO. We were launched as blah, blah, blah. I think it's a lot of work for them. I think it, they don't want to do this. Uh, this is pro probably a bit of the reason why um, during uh, the third lawsuit that's happening against uh, Ripple right now, the other two have been completely squashed. The third one, I think they moved over to a federal court or something like that. And I think the judge will then be able to decide if they are a security or if they have been running a, a never-ending ICO. This also happened a couple days ago as well. There was another ICO that another judge somewhere in the United States just recently deemed was not a security. So this is what I kind of think that they're going for. It is nice to hear that they're trying to add other uh, coins, tokens, currencies, whatever you kind of want to call them. I am afraid of another situation where once again, uh, XRP gets scapegoated to the side simply because of something that the SEC is not doing. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's nice that they're trying to add other coins. I'm, uh, you, you may have noticed as well, it's not just Fidelity. It was also the New York Stock Exchange who mentioned that they're uh, looking to include other currencies onto their platform because it's not just two cryptocurrencies anymore. Like, we understand that Bitcoin has the name, uh, but there are a lot more people who are into uh, and hold a lot more uh, altcoins than they... Like, no no one has an enormous amount of, of, of Bitcoin and very few people have over anywhere from 1,000 to 5,000 Ethereum. There are a lot of other coins out there, and I'm glad that other major platforms are starting to understand this and will eventually be focusing on them. But without further ado, let us move on. It's kind of like altcoin day. Uh, cryptocurrency hardware wallet known as Ledger has updated its support of altcoin Monero for its Nano S device. The company confirmed in a press release shared with Cointelegraph yesterday. The French company, which alongside Trezor and KeepKey, is one of the oldest hardware wallet manufacturers in the industry, said the Nano S was already compatible with Monero's latest GUI 0.13 release. They said, we are thrilled to welcome another top 10 cryptocurrency into the Ledger platform with Monero. He said with this addition, Ledger devices now cover 90% of the entire crypto market capitalization. Like his competitors, Ledger continues to focus on supporting as many of the popular cryptocurrencies as possible as security of holdings becomes an ever more pressing issue for investors. Very good news that they have added another coin. Uh, Ledger tends to be very like up on it when it comes to adding new coins. This is I, I like Ledger and I also like the Exodus wallet. Uh, I'm actually really shocked that... that Exodus has been adding so many uh, coins recently. It's, it's actually kind of not weird, uh, but the, the 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 amount of support that has been thrown to other altcoins. Uh, Exodus also has this thing right now where they, I, I think they're supporting like an enormous amount of 
uh, the ERC20 tokens as well. So if you've been looking for a wallet, like a hard, or not, not a hard wallet, like a desktop wallet for Exodus to be able to put your ERC20 tokens that you may have as opposed to having them on an exchange, you might want to look into downloading the Exodus wallet. Uh, but once again, very good for the Ledger people for supporting Monero. 90% uh, of, the, of the market cap is actually kind of insane. I wonder what the next uh, coins that they're going to add. But to be fair, kind of unfair, uh, it, they already have most of the most important coins. Uh, and I feel like in a lot of situations, adding too many coins kind of you know sullies uh, what you're trying to offer, i.e., it's okay to have support for like 30 coins, but when you have support for like a thousand coins that a lot of other people may not even be using that have very low liquidity. Yeah, that's just kind of my personal opinion on it. Uh, so this one is kind of a, a two-parter and um, it's interesting, but I, I think it's also a very uh, kind of disturbing trend uh, that we're going to start to see more of in possibly the near future and it it could be a bit worrying and i'll i'll read through it and you'll kind of get it binance users have been or have reported receiving emails urging them to withdraw their funds from the exchange and abandon trading the emails initially seen as a potential scam were confirmed by reddit users and have been noted by the twitter crypto community a common thread runs through the type of user that reported receiving the email binance targets uh, certain countries based on its user agreement. However, there has been no official message or list of countries to abandon the exchange. One of the countries is Iran, which is also on the UN sanctions list for countries. I'm pretty sure you see where this is kind of going. However, the case of Belarus and Serbia are different. While the countries are not hostile, they are outside the Euro area. But most importantly, the two countries are not on Binance's list of countries accessible by SMS or text message. Other countries not reachable by SMS include Liberia and Zimbabwe. The SMS is important for activating uh, two-step identification, the thing that they have on there. The issue is important for Binance, since one of the biggest attacks on the exchange happened in March. Vulnerable attacks without 2FA were hijacked by bots, creating rogue trades. Binance also offers Google Auth Authenticator, but the lack of some blah, 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 so, 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 blah, blah, blah. Uh, the last couple of months have been very interesting for the cryptocurrency community, simply because a lot of cryptocurrency exchanges have been told by mandate that they must follow uh, not even, it's not even worldwide laws, it's US laws. And what we're slowly seeing is, is that uh, Binance has, has come forward and say, you know, we're, we're, we're totally fine with complying. They wanna, Binance has mentioned many times that they wanna be the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the entire world. They said in another article that they want Binance to be like a verb, like, like Google it, you would just say Binance it. Don't know if that's gonna happen. Uh, with um, agreeing to regulations and agreeing uh, to what the U.S. is saying, uh, they now have to also fall in line with sanctions. And what's happening is, uh, and this will tie directly into the next thing, is that a lot of cryptocurrency exchanges are starting to shut their doors for different countries and different places around the world, which, if you are a crypto maximalist, is a bit, or not even a bit, is heavily unethical. Uh, not that I'm saying that Binance is, uh, not that they're not in the wrong, uh, but the amount of regulations that we are having now in the cryptocurrency space, they're, they're beginning to encroach on exactly what crypto is about. And, and I'm sure that they know this as well. They are not to even whatever, uh, Governments are very annoyed that cryptocurrencies exist, that they don't have complete control over them. And one of the main ways that they have found that they are able to control these crypto assets, cryptocurrencies, is through uh, the restriction of cryptocurrency exchanges. Because if you can't stop someone from sending me money or me sending you money or you sending your friends somewhere in another country money, you can stop it from going through exchanges. And not to, you know, thank goodness that we don't actually need cryptocurrency exchanges to be able to uh, send money back and forth between each other. But this also does tie into the next uh, piece of news that we also have. And it comes down to this. Uh, readers may remember the Sam Sam ransomware attack, which cost everyday computers users a total of at least $6 million in Bitcoin as reported back in August. 
Today, the Treasury, the U.S. Treasury announced that it had uncovered the names of two Iranians who helped turn the Bitcoin acquired and the scam into Iranian currency for the attackers. Their name are blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to say their names. It is now illegal for any U.S. person or business to do business with these two individuals, even if they travel to a country outside of Iran. As a result of the re-imposition of sanctions on Iran, it is illegal to do business in Iran anyhow, but these individuals specifically have earned a place on the Treasury's specially designated nationals list. And thus, even with sanctions, when sanctions are eventually removed, they in particular are off limit for any Americans. Uh, for the first time, the Treasury also designated the Bitcoin addresses used by the Iranians, which are that and that. And were used over 7,000 times. So the, the, the point is, they, from what I get... Uh, some illegal activity happened between people who are in Iran, and now the U.S. government is uh, blacklisting Bitcoin addresses of people who they say did something. I have not gone into the specifics of the the the, the potential crime that these people have committed. Uh, the problem is, is this is this is uh, or could be be the beginning of a, of a slippery slope when. Cryptocurrency exchanges are told not to deal with this country or deal with this country. First of all, cryptocurrency is global. Cryptocurrency exchanges, as we have the internet, are also global. And when you tell a global network to not deal with this country or that country and this country or that country and this fifth country over here because the U.S. says so and they have to comply, it's, 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 it's a very weird situation that we're getting to. I figured this was going to happen at some point. Um... This is not me saying that people who have done things that are illegal should not be uh, prosecuted, persecuted, whatever the word is, or be brought to justice. Uh, but there's a very slippery slope when you start doing things like this as far as you can, as a government, deem anything to be illegal and then start blacklisting uh, anything. What I kind of don't get as, as far as the, 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 the specifications of it, I understand blacklisting addresses. Uh, for anyone who's used a crypto wallet, you can always just make a new address. So I don't really understand why designating this the, 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 these exact string of numbers and letters is important, especially when you can click another button and make another one. It's very weird. Um, I had hoped at this point that uh, cryptocurrency addresses, especially Bitcoin is going to take far too long to be able to implement all of this. As far as like uh, privacy layers and stuff like that, to be able to send transactions as you wish, when you want, how you do so and so. But a lot of, uh, there's another article that I also don't have inside here as well. There was also some other situation where the U.S. government said that they had found a handful of people around the world who were dealing in uh, illicit terrorist activities. And as such, these uh, Bitcoin addresses has, ha had also been not blacklisted, but like they're being followed and stuff like that. And it's, uh, I don't want to get into a situation where uh, like we have in many other countries, and there's about 15 of them, so I'm not going to even name them, uh, where in these countries, if you do something with your own money, you can be jailed or you can be seen as having done something illegal. Uh, because for all we know, we could have a situation where, like in China, uh, if you try to take, like Ch China has a situation right now where you try to take out more than 50,000, that's it, dollars from the country, like leaving the country, uh, that's considered illegal. And I don't think they'll be able to logically find a way to be able to do this, but we know that Bitcoin addresses and many other cryptocurrency addresses can be traced. And I don't want a situation where people are trying to do things with their own money and then accused of money laundering because they have their cryptocurrencies on their laptop or on their phone and have to declare that. The, it's it's a very weird situation. Uh, the fact, I mean, I'm sure you see where, where I'm going with all of this. Is kind of troubling. I think crypto really needs to get it. I I, I hope they uh, that cryptocurrency projects end up implementing certain layers sooner than later. I think so much talk has been happening about the the prices of these things. A lot of people aren't paying attention to exactly the uh, what should have been happening or what should have been implemented years ago on these networks. Regardless of the case, uh, Binance apparently has been banning users from different countries, telling them to take their funds off, abandon trading, and they've been told also to not deal with other certain countries. And now we have the U.S. government uh, blacklisting Bitcoin addresses in particular that are tied to certain people. And um, yeah, just thought I'd throw that uh, bit of information in there. But yeah. 
to finish things off on the same exact kind of topic, 1% of it, Consensus Labs has led a $2.1 million seed round for Aztec, a startup that's working to make Ethereum transactions private so financial institutions can comfortably use the second largest blockchain. Announced on Thursday, other investors in the round include Entrepreneur First, Samoa Investments, Jeffrey Tarrant, and Charlie Songhurst, Aztec created by the mathematician Tom Pocock and nuclear physicist Zachary Williamson uses zero knowledge proofs or also known as ZK Snarks, the cryptographic technique popularized by the Zcash currency to enhance privacy on a shared ledger. But the startup claims its protocol is twice as efficient as other known technologies on the network. The protocol is intended to be used by banks. Pocock told Coindesk, and they will be able to utilize the tech through a partnership with Credit Mint, an Ethereum-based platform for corporate debt issuance and trading created by the same team as Aztec. Uh, so there's now going to be, or people are working for, for there's a there's there's actually been other news about this, and we haven't heard about it in about over a year, which makes you a bit disappointed. I, 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 I don't, I don't know if you've heard of the expression called uh, be like a fly on the wall. I wish I could see exactly what the Ethereum developers are doing. It seems like they have so many promising projects that don't really end up happening or being implemented. We had a lot of other privacy layers that were supposed to be added to the Ethereum network. This was about a year, year and a half ago when they were talking about this. We've had no news of it since. We've had other news of people talking about that they were trying to add privacy layers to the Bitcoin network. But since then, nothing for Ethereum. Uh, it's nice that they are potentially working on a uh, layer of privacy for the Ethereum network for like institutions, but it needs to go a lot further than that. I once again fly on the wall. I, I want to know why things are taking so long. I, I wonder why basic implementations aren't kind of rolled out every six months. It seems like a lot of these cryptocurrency projects, at least to me, I said before, I'm not a coder, so I don't know the exact specifications of everything that's going on, but it, it feels like we'd be more in, in in a better place in the cryptocurrency world as far as like um peace of mind with what we do with our own money if we had a soft fork every six to eight months with little things kind of rolled out until they rolled into a bigger snowball of things it seems like everyone is desperately trying to implement something that ends up taking four years to be able to have onto the network and by that time the the the, the world has kind of moved on and you kind of get overtaken by other cryptocurrencies that are out there just kind of my personal opinion on it. It's nice to hear that this is actually going to be ended up happening. I hope that we end up getting news relatively soon about some of the other layers on top of the Ethereum network. Uh, we had, I think it was called Dandelion was the one that they were working on for the Bitcoin network. Haven't heard anything about that in a very long time. I have a very strong feeling. And this is, this is my, obviously my personal opinion. I feel like the people from Blockstream have probably been visited by... Uh, higher ups in the uh, financial world and or regulatory world and have been told to uh, not scrap any privacy layers on top of the Bitcoin network, but I'm, maybe they have been uh, uh, discouraged in doing so because I don't know this. I mean, I, I, I feel like crypto should, should be a lot further as far as things like this. Maybe just my own personal opinion, maybe just my uh, annoyance it's not with the markets right now. I always feel like crypto should be so much farther ahead. But when you, when there are uh, events and, and and things going on in the cryptocurrency world, everyone tends to just only completely focus on how much money can we make, how big blockchain is going to get, uh, who's going to use this, how big they are when they're using this, how much money we can make from this. It's never like a uh, like the old days of of crypto are gone when we were talking about um bringing crypto to the masses and make, making sure that people in, in Africa and South America ha had access to these uh, platforms so that they could use it as well. And the talk of privacy layers in 2013 and 2014, none of which have come to fruition at all, except for the actual privacy coins. Uh, anyway, to, uh, to kind of finish this off, if you look at the this is actually even like slightly of this is so uh, um, one a problem that I'm having right now with finding an actual like uh proper cryptocurrency price uh metric is that if you look over here on CoinDesk they have Bitcoin is down five percent five percent six percent five eight uh Bitcoin is at forty fifty eight on CoinDesk. And over here, it is still at forty one hundred. I mean, maybe not a major difference, but fifty dollars is a is a huge is a huge spot difference when it comes to uh, buying cryptocurrencies. 
and even on coin market cap i'm i'm also not getting the same amounts or results uh the point is the market is actually down from where it was uh certain coins are reported being up i usually we saw last time that stellar and nope, cardano is not quite there stellar on cardano uh boosted up in price the last time that coinbase ended up adding a coin i think zcash might be up a where is it yeah it's up four percent it was up uh, like 11 12 percent over the last day or two simply because of the listing uh, like I said, don't get me wrong, Zcash just isn't a, a majorly popular coin. I think uh, Coinbase is still just trying to add whatever they can so that they can say that they've added other coins to their platforms so that they can have other people uh, join the cryptocurrency space and stuff like that. It's still not enough, and they know that it's not enough. Uh, for what it's worth, uh, I, I want to say that, that the market isn't down an enormous amount, but if you look at, once again, Coindesk, it shows a completely different number. It shows that we are back in the red and that Bitcoin is about to fall below 4,000 again. I'm still looking for a proper website for cryptocurrency prices. I was using CoinMarketCap. A lot of people aren't too happy with CoinMarketCap. Uh, just to kind of throw this out there, what's been happening is that people have been complaining that CoinMarketCap isn't showing the uh, proper price of XRP and they're not showing the proper 24-hour uh, volume because uh, the, uh, what's it called? The, the XRP ledger is showing a very different number than CoinMarketCap is showing as far as the 24-hour uh, volume and stuff like that. And CoinMarketCap before, especially last year, when XRP was shooting up in price, they removed certain cryptocurrency exchanges that uh, CoinMarketCap deemed not unnecessary, but they didn't want them on their platform. And this caused the price of XRP in particular, the, 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 the rest of the market slid down as well. But XRP in particular was also um, heavily uh, delta blow. That's kind of like the words I can find for it when this new uh, pricing metric were kind of uh, implemented. So coin market cap, like there's, this is exactly why I said before um, a couple of months ago and even now more so now, we're going to have a, a very huge shift in where we get our cryptocurrency prices from simply because of things like this. Like it's very difficult to be able to give people proper information as to exactly what's happening in the cryptocurrency space and the cryptocurrency prices when there's no proper metric for anything everyone uh, is choosing right now the cryptocurrency exchanges that they like that they may be affiliated with that they may be partnered with in some way that they are that just went from 4050 to 4116 in like half a second I, I don't know if anyone saw that maybe there's a lot of volatility that i'm not paying attention to there we go right again uh this is exactly what i'm talking about there's there, there aren't uh, specific proper metrics for cryptocurrency prices right now and it's causing a lot of uh this is why the the institutional investors when they talk about the the pricing metrics or or taking over the space this is exactly why it's going to happen if we're going to have a situation where uh crypto is for everyone you should then just include every single cryptocurrency exchange in the world that's actually trading these things even if their volume is 48 cents they should be included because this is a worldwide market but we have a situation where people aren't including things simply because they don't like them they're not affiliated with them they have heard something else about blah 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 and um yeah sorry for the little tiny rant uh crypto really needs to get it together there's a lot of uh separationismist uh going on in crypto right now we we, we, we had the whole tribal thing we still have the tribal thing uh the the we, we, we got a bit over the 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 toxicity that we had uh, around summertime, uh, but we still need a type of unification. And the, the saddest part is this unification is going to come from uh, the, the industry that the the industry that tried to get away from the reason that Bitcoin was created <laughs> uh, them. And they're going to be the people who end up dictating the prices of cryptocurrencies and where they get their crypto prices from. Uh, but yeah, the market is trending sideways down. I, I can't really even give you a proper um, accurate metric. Uh, there's been relatively no bad news uh, that I've seen over the last day, hours, week. Uh, that should constitute anything kind of really going down. Anyway, uh, that is definitely going to do it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, and or evening. I um, hope you all have a great Friday. It's finally the end of the week. That means nothing for me, though. I was, I was thinking the other day, I was like, I always get so happy when Friday comes around because I think I'll have a little break, but I make like two to three videos a day, so uh, there's never rest for me. 
But I uh, hope you all enjoyed. And yeah, I will talk to you all soon. See you.